Hello guys, welcome to my channel. So today I have come up with this video and this was long awaited video and I have seen a lot of comments and lot of requests on my previous video where I have shown the online test that I did gave for Publicis Sapient. So in this video, I'm going to go through all the questions or all the sections that were asked to me uh, in the further rounds. So let me uh, give you uh, some kind of insight first. So I have given Publicis Sapient interview twice and the first time I did not cleared and in the second time I got in and I got the offer letter and I have already shown uh, the coding test for that but for the further rounds I am going to clear that part now. So before we move on to that if you are new to my channel if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please do there is an easy and quick step that you just have to hit that red colored subscribe button and that is all. Now let's move on to this presentation. All right so these were the topics um, that is being usually asked when you go through publicist sapient interview. So these are not the topics that I researched over internet. These are the topics that were given to me by the recruiter himself. So I have been contacted twice by two separate um, re re uh, recruiters and they gave me a list. One um, list I got through my WhatsApp and the another one I got through email, right? So uh, in both these uh, two Excel sheet that I that they gave me uh, first was the Excel sheet photo and the later one was just uh, an email with text and there I have seen a pattern and I recognized the few topics that uh, I can see that these are the topics where they asked me the questions right so these are the five main topics which they are going to focus on so there are many interviewers out there so they can ask any question but these are the five topics that they usually choose right so core java problem solving api development databases and microservices right so here you will see a few sections a few topics that usually gets asked in every organization right but there are few organization that do not ask these topics right so let's not get into that then there are these additional topics that can be asked, but these are just good to have. These are not mandatory to have. So let me be clear with you on this that they have a cutoff. So depending on these topics, you have to clear their cutoff, right? So I don't know what they have at their end, but I have uh, I have heard saying uh, recruiter saying this part to me that they have cutoff on each and every section. So they give numbers based on these five sections and then depending on that you get into the next round right but these are just good to have and these will be noted down and given to the next interviewer and he or she can then see uh, based on his requirement whether uh, what parameters uh, are they looking for to judge, judge you right so these are just good to have these are not mandatory all right, so moving on. So the mandatory topics, right? So here you will see these sections or the portion of core Java that they will ask questions on. So I will give you example. So for fundamentals, they are going to ask you related uh, to immutable classes, final keyword specifically then they will specifically ask you on how you can create an immutable class. They can ask if there uh, any class existing in your JDK which is immutable, what are the benefits of creating an immutable class and is immutable class thread safe? So these are the questions that can be asked on your fundamentals, right? So basically immutable is your main hot topic here. O principle so you all know about that so they will ask you about theoretical stuff not the practical stuff so they will just um, like like to know if you know about these principles and so are these so for solid principles they are not going to ask you all five of them they will specifically ask you on one of these it can be of Liskov, it can be of solid um, it can be of single responsibility right it can be anything so you do have to prepare this then let's come down to collections, which is 
hot topic for each and every organization. So for collections, there is a specific topic, which is hash map and concurrent hash map. So first question is going to be if you know about the internal working of hash map, if you were to tell them about the internal functionality, then they will ask what data structure are they internally using? So if you tell them before Java 8, then they will specifically ask you if there were any improvements after Java 8 or with Java 8. So you have to answer that part. Then there is going to be an immediate question, which is going to be hash code and equals. So hash code and equals, they are going to ask for a custom class. So let's say if I want to insert hash map, uh, if I want to insert employee data into the hash map, what should I implement uh, in my hash code and equals method? What should be the, uh, the code written inside those overridden methods, right? That and there can be a question uh, of comparison between two employee objects having all the same parameters. It could be like uh, their salary is same, name is same. So will there be two objects or one uh, in your hash map entry, right? So that can be one question. Then about synchronization, they are going to ask if you can create a synchronized map or a collection, how you can do that. What is concurrent hash map? What is the internal functionality? Is it faster than hash table? Is it faster than hash map? What pros and cons are coming with your concurrent hash map, right? So these can be the questions. Coming down to multi-threading. So multi-threading can be a bit complex for some of you, but if you are good with basics, then it is not going to be as complex. So the favorite topic in this section is executor framework. They are going to ask a lot of questions about executor, right? Fork and join um, can be um, asked, but I'm not confident about that. But uh, you need to be aware about a uh, few things, which is your deadlock, your uh, uh, singleton, design pattern and how you can synchronize that pattern. What is the benefit of double locking? Things like that. So multi-threading is going to be asked related to Java 8 also. If you were to uh, implement a, a, an interface, how can you do that with Lambda expression? So it is not going to be asked, um, I think 99.9%, but you, you should know about this, right? Then coming down to JMM. So Java memory model is going to be asked based on if you know about garbage collection types. If you know about that, then it's good. Then they can ask you about the types of uh, memory spaces uh, Java can have, right? Then do you know about the garbage collection process which we have with our JVM, right? How does garbage collection works basically? And that is also uh, a basic topic, right? Other than that, there is not going to be asked uh, much on JMM. Then Java 8 and Java 9 new features. So you should know about that. Uh, even, even when you don't tell them Lambda expression, they are going to ask the question on Lambda expression. I don't know why, but they do, right? Then design pattern. So gangs of four, right? So you need to be aware, aware about one in each category. So you need to know about at least one. You can have exactly one, but you should know about at least one. So they can ask you specifically on a design pattern, but I'm, I'm sure they will not. So you should know about at least one design pattern from each category. So this is that. So let me summarize about core Java. Fundamentals, the hot topic is immutability or wrapper classes. Uh, I did not say about wrapper classes, but yeah, they, at, it can be asked. Uh, because it is immutable, that's why. Um, OOP principles, so basically your all principles you should know about theoretically and practically they will not ask anything. Again, for solid principles, they can ask theoretically as well as practically. So they will ask if you have used any of this principle practically in your code. And they will ask not all five of them, just one, maybe two, two um, but mainly one. Then about collections, hash map, and hash table and concurrent hash map. These are the three hot topics there. For multi-threading, executor framework is going to be your hot topic. Other than that, they can link multi-threading with Java 8, relatively question, right? JMM, garbage collection. 
Java 8, 9, basically Lambda expression and other uh, new interface methods or maybe other Datetime API. I'm uh, not sure about Datetime API, but yeah, Stream API, they will ask. For design pattern, you just have to know one, at least one of each category, right? So these are the main topics that comprises your whole interview of Publicis Sapient. These are the exactly uh, same topics that can be asked. There are going to be two rounds after your coding test. One is going to be completely technical. Another one is going to be based on your projects and designing. So they are going to cover all the basics, but with the practical examples. So they will ask something like, oh, if you have um, worked on a project where, have, where, where you have used singleton design pattern, can you give me an example of that? Then they can ask you if you have used a stream API and for what purpose have you used a stream API in your project? Things like that. All right. So this was core Java. Now let's come down to problem solving. So problem solving, um, I'm 50% 50, 50 sure here that they will not ask you. Right. So if the interviewer is really good in problem solving, then he is going to ask you. Otherwise, I'm sure he, he will not. So I have seen two interviewers. So that's why I'm saying from my experience. So um, in one of the interview, I was asked about caching specifically. So these are the four hot topics that are us usually being asked in every organization. So if you were to do a coding test, you must know about problem solving, right? So sorting algorithms, searching algorithm, hashing algorithms, hashing techniques even, and then about caching, they will just ask you about any of the caching algorithm or tool that you have used. You can talk about Redis all day long or any in-memory cache, or you can um, tell them about what you know about, what you have worked on specifically like that. But if they specifically ask you to implement a caching algorithm, then um, you have to know about it. Um, like you, you have to write the code for it. So I was asked on LRU, which is least recently used algorithm. So it was a, uh, it was a quick solution uh, because I, I have already uh, told this problem and uh, told this solution in multiple interviews. So I knew about this. So uh, that was that. Other than that, they are not going to ask any uh, big question from here. Uh, there, there can be a simple, uh, quick questions other than that, but caching, you must know, right? Then coming down to API development. So Publicis Sapient has a lot of project where they are working on either RESTful or microservices. So a API development is kind of uh, a big parameter for them to decide. So here REST principles, open API, HTOs and versioning. So these are the main topics that they can ask. There are not going to be any other topic that they will ask questions on. So I was asked about REST, REST principles, open API and versioning. HTOs, I have written that because it can be a possibility because this is also a hot topic that they can ask. So you you need to know uh, like basics about HTOs. About open API, they will ask about uh, techniques that you have used along with open API and um, where have you used in, in your projects. For versioning, they will just ask simple stuff like when and how do you decide the versions of an API and do you write documentation and stuff like that. REST principles are pretty much straightforward. They will just ask few small questions. And another that they can ask you about methods, HTTP methods that you know about. Then they will ask the very famous question, what is the difference between put and post? And when do you choose them? Things like that. All right. Now coming down to databases. So uh, this I think is pretty much known to each and every backend developer, but they will ask specifically about indexing. So uh, I was asked a question where they gave me a scenario that there is a big and big database containing millions and billions of records. And they want to improve the efficiency of fetching the record from the database. So uh, I started with stream API and some uh, in cache algorithm caching, things like that. 
but then I recalled maybe they are just asking about databases. So there was no hint there, but I just thought maybe they are linking this question to indexing. So that question was related to indexes and then they specifically asked um, on which columns and how will you decide that the indexes should be used on these columns and not these columns, right? Then uh, not joins, they did not ask me about joins. Uh, JDBC, no, they did not. Uh, sharding joints and JDBC are the topics that I seen from these two recruiters topics so that's why I have written other than that indexing is going to be the main hot topic right big topic now microservices so um, not many people know much about this maybe uh, not many people have worked on uh, product based organization if you are coming with service based organization, maybe you are not having exposure to microservices, right? So they are not going to go deep into it. That's why. So uh, problem is that there is no specific question in this topic. They can ask related to their project that they're working on because publishers sapient work on a lot of APIs and microservices architecture. So uh, they can ask you specifically why microservices, what is microservices, what is microservices framework, what is the difference between monolithic and uh, microservices framework or architecture. Then they will ask you about design patterns. Do you know any of it? So you should know at least one, exact one will work, but at least one you should know about. Then uh, CQRS, they can ask, specifically but if you don't know then it's well good and good enough if you can ask answer the basic question what is microservices if you can satisfy them then they are not going to bother about uh, deep uh, questions so pros and cons like microservices comes with its own disadvantages so they will like to know what disadvantages they have because everyone knows about pros but not many knows about cons then transaction management. So this is also a hot topic, really hot topic. So they will ask, how do you manage transaction management in microservices? So it's a completely theoretical uh, answer. There is no practical answer for it because each project is different. Each module is different. So management of transaction can be different, can be complex, can be simpler in each and every project. So you just have to tell them the theoretical answer itself, like what is transaction management? How do you do it? Things like that. And then they will like get satisfied, I think. So these are the main mandatory topics. Then about additional topics, uh, performance and profiling. So they can ask you, do you know how you can take a dump of your application? So you should know about it. If you don't, then it's okay. You can just tell them I haven't done something like this. Um, then about profiling, uh, it's a it's an immediate question. So performance of profiling comes in a pair basically. So they will ask like, have you used any kind of uh, a tool to do kind of investigation? So uh, they will not go much into it. So if you have, then that it is good enough. Otherwise it's okay also. Then monitoring, um, basically they will ask, let's say if some specific part of your code is of uh, taking a longer duration of time to run. Maybe they are taking a lot of space, maybe a lot of time. How will you debug that? How will you monitor that? How will you pinpoint the exact portion of the code which is creating this issue? J units, they will ask simple questions like have you worked on Mokito J unit? What kind of unit testing or testing techniques have you used? Have you worked on? If you say J unit, um, they can ask simple questions like what are the annotation for this and that? And how do you actually uh, decide? Uh, oh yes, uh, I forgot one question. So they asked me uh, if if you have a private method, uh, can you still um, run that test case? So that can be one uh, question for you. About Linux, Unix, um, I'm sure they are not going to ask you uh, other than if you have the exposure for that, right? So these are the topics that can be asked and these are the only topics that they're going to ask from, right? So I think this is it for this video. I hope I have given you everything uh, that you needed. If you, if, if I did help you on this, do let, do let me know in the comment section and yeah, please like and subscribe to the channel and I will meet you in some another video. Till then, have a good day, stay safe and bye-bye.